It's Big Ass Shit 13 Motoring, A1HipHop.com. Log in, get your fix. You know what I'm saying? Come over here, get your motherfucking car fixed. One time, 713 Life. It's a lifestyle, baby. 713, CEO, big ass. Pleasure. What up, boss man? I'm blessed by the best. Same here. New location, huh? New location, definitely. Private garage. You know, gotta get some exclusivity with the brand. Yeah. Ducked off. It, it's ducked off, but you know, it's, it's by appointment, so. Right. People wanna come through. They just hit me up and, and they can come through. Now, I want to congratulate you because you just got married. Appreciate it. Definitely. Just got married. How you feel? I feel like I just got married. You feel like a new man? Dude? Uh, not a new man, but it's definitely some adjusting. You okay. know, you got to do. Now you got to listen. You got to listen to, you know what I'm saying, your significant other more than if you were single. You know what I'm saying? Right. A lot of people, you know, wanted, would love to achieve that point, but nowadays, you know, what's going on, it's, it's, but to achieve that level speaks volume because that shows she's a wonderful woman. You know? Yeah, she definitely is. You know, she keeps me grounded. You know, uh, she's my sense of normalcy. Yeah. Uh, you know, a lot of people these days, they don't have no, you know, they don't have too much faith in the system because of the way society is, you know, in regards to young people getting married, but you definitely got to be ready. You know what I'm saying? Right. Situation. It's a case by case basis. You know what I'm saying? Like you can't base, you know, the success of one person's marriage versus somebody else's because you know, like, it's a case by case basis. You know, you just got to be equally love, equally yoked. You got to communicate and you got to work at it. The thing about it is, you know, I learned so far in, in the short time is that you got to work at it. You know, and it ain't easy, but right. <clears throat> It's a, it's a lot harder to give it up. It's a process. Yeah, then then to then to you know keep working at it. So we've been dating for five years before we got married. So we definitely know each other, and you know that's a big that's a big factor in your in your decision making process. Right. And like they say, you got to be your friend first, technically, and 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 then let it inquire there. You know? Yeah, I mean, like I said, you know, I believe it's case by case. You know, both people just got to be ready to make a commitment to change. All it is really, to me, is a, it's a commitment to change. Boom. It's a commitment to change. How did 713 get started, man? 713, man, it's, the history is so long and so detailed. And I'm pretty sure it has been uh, dated and, and chronologued over time, you know, so many different ways. But it's just a group of guys... You know what I'm saying? They really started <clears throat> as friends back in the day in high school. And we just we just had an idea, you know, we had a dream, you know, everybody contributed different factors. Um, it's been a whole lot of people that help us get to where we are today. And um, we were just some friends, you know, that really just had an idea and a vision to, to be different, you know what I mean? And to try to take something as far as we could, and I feel like we did a good job. So you said, how, how long, how many years has it been? About what? 12 years. Wow. Yeah, we've been, we've been in business 12 years. We started in 2002. Been rocking ever since. Yeah, we've been rocking ever since, man. We, we haven't, we haven't stopped. We haven't letting up. 
you know, we take taking the business in some different paths, you know, different direction, but yeah, we still we still all matching for the same same common goal. Right. You have a location in Cali too, right? Are you trying to get one? Nah, we don't have a location in Cali. Uh, we got some other business ventures going on in California right now, but we don't have a location in Cali. It's a Houston-based company. Right. That would be big, though. 3101? Well, 310 is, 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 was already a company, and, mm -hmm. you know, that's <clears throat> where we got, well, where I got the concept from it was from 310. I went to school in, in Cali in junior college and I played a little football over there before our scholarship and went to another school. Right. And uh, <clears throat> basically we, we try to incorporate the same business model that they had over there at the time and just bring it to Houston. Nice. Dub Magazine Complex. I mean, as you can look on the wall, we see the achievements. How does it feel to get all that? Man, we definitely blessed. We we definitely happy to be recognized nationwide, you know, for the things that we do. We actually get more nationwide recognition than we do at home. So, I mean, it definitely feels good, you know, that that we can represent, you know, the city in a way that, you know, they get some nationwide feedback. Do you think I mean, we can have a similar, you know, show like, you know, you got the Dubs car show, you, you know, 713, especially being in Houston, you know, we have our own lifestyle. We have our own looks. We have our own culture. We have our own culture. Do you think we can get that similar thing or you think they haven't grasped to that culture or some could have? Well, there, a, a lot of people in the automotive industry, they don't consider, they don't consider Houston to be a major market for automotive, you know, you know. They got LA, they got Miami. Uh, those are like the two most major markets. For me, LA is the mecca of automotive industry. You know, um, you got an automotive related business on every block in LA, right. you know what I mean? So from paint and body, from metal fabrication guys, wood guys, you know, I feel like that they're the best. I feel like they set the trends uh, over there and everything else is to follow because they had a big low rider culture, you know what I mean? Right. <clears throat> and a lot of the, the a lot of the things from the low rider culture come from the Latin community and they got a large influx of people that live in LA. Yeah. You know what I mean? So like people that are really good at that kind of work. You know what I'm saying? So, <clears throat> on both of the coasts, you know what I'm saying, you see it the most. And I spend a lot of time over there. Right. In LA and in Miami. Just trying to get inspiration, you know what I'm saying? Just trying to get ideas, just trying to draw from some of the people who I consider are some of the better people doing it. And then kind of bring that stuff to Houston and kind of offer it. But it's only a handful of people in Houston that, right. that want to take direction from, you know, from from cars that what we seen out of town, right? You know what I'm saying. And <clears throat> most of the people in Houston, they kind of want to stick. They kind of want to stick to the same pattern. Same pattern. Yeah. So it's just kind of like it's hard. <clears throat> it's hard to break break somebody in Houston like a traditional Houstonian guy. You know what I'm saying from his habits because. We want to ride slab in H Town, you know. Everybody want limo ten in H Town. Right. Everybody want beat in right. H Town. Everybody want swings in H Town. So then you got, <clears throat> you know, that's our culture. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I embrace the culture and I love it from a cultural standpoint. But at the end of the day, you got a lot of people in other cities that's really making money off of our culture. So you got people, you know, like uh, things that were derived from our culture, you know, with the slab, with the drink, music, with the music, mm -hmm. it's being highly popularized by people in other cities, and they making money off of it. Right. But then you got people who originated that style right here from Houston, Texas, and <clears throat> they've had like several issues with the career or whatever. And it's just, you know, our pop, our, our culture has just been highly popularized. Well, I, I think I think it's more of 
they they respect us, but they're not trying to just respect that part of the culture with Houston. Because uh, in Dallas, it's, it's kind of buzzing as well, right? Uh, I don't really know too much about, you know, what's going on in Dallas, but mm-hmm. me being an H-Town guy from the South Side, like, it's a lot of things that I've seen or a lot of trends that, that I remember mm-hmm. when I was younger that I would see older people doing stuff that we could never even think about affording. Right. You know, I feel like people in Houston have been, like, way far ahead than, you know, of times just in a different way. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because you got people spending 10 grand on rims, and some people will say that's a lot. But then, we, you know, you got people from way back in the day who been spending 10 racks on some swangers that wasn't right. even new. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. So it's just, I just feel, you know, a certain kind of way about the car, the car culture in Houston. And then every time I'm out of town, you know, everybody, that's the first thing they ask me, you do cars in Houston, so you, you do swangers. And, and yep. they say how much they don't like swangers. So you think you get pigeonholed a little bit? What do you mean? Like they put you in a box? Not really, because, you know, we've been in business for 12 years and we got uh, a good amount of work, mm-hmm. you know, that speaks for itself that people can go back and retrieve. Like, we don't have too many swangles on our resume. I know. I you know you. what I mean? So it's not like that's really been our look, you know what but When saying? they go to the shop, they be like, whoa, it's, a, it's like they, it got different everything. Yeah, yeah, We We kind of like to specialize on the, the high-end luxury look you know what i'm saying but customized i'm a rim guy i'm not really a swanger guy i never had a set of swangers i never owned a set of swangers you know y'all hear that sometimes a lot of people they be like you ain't you don't have no swangers you never had no swangers like it's an h-town thing and i get that a lot too because i haven't had swangers and they be like man come on man come on everybody don't want to want to get there the reason i don't have swangers is because i have so much respect for the culture mm-hmm. When I was a kid, you know what I'm saying, you, you couldn't afford, I couldn't afford Swangers. Yeah. And Swangers, to me, they used to mean something like yeah. more than just the rim on the car, you know what I'm saying? It meant that whoever had them was really hustling, whoever had them, you know what I'm saying? Right. It was only a couple of ways to get them. So I, you know, I can't really just speak on that on, <laughs> right, the, on right. the camera, but right, right. when I grew up, you know what I'm saying, I wasn't supposed to have them. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So when they came popularized, you know what I'm saying, by the time Swingers became popular, I had several partners that lost their life over Swingers, several kids that I know that, yeah. you know what I'm saying, was enamored by the things that the swingers bring you right you know what i'm saying got in trouble behind swingers like <clears throat> like swingers they had a negative connotation for a kid that couldn't afford them right you know what i'm saying like you if you had a set of swingers when i grew up you had to carry yourself a different way you had right. to get off the streets at a certain hour you know what i'm saying like it was just a code of respect for me with swingers i'm from the south side